at South High School's Acuity Fieldhouse where tonight the Red Wings take on Green Bay Notre Dame. Hello everybody, my name is Mike Martin. Joining me is the coach Chris Wright. Chris, we got a big game tonight. South comes in 5-3 and three in conference and uh, Notre Dame 4-4, four and four, but they got some uh, good talent on that squad. Yeah, I think it's a really big game for Sheboygan South. It's a home game, game you got to have to stay in contention for the uh, conference title on your division. You can't look look past Notre Dame to the game next Saturday against Notre, or excuse me, against South, who's you know, or excuse me, against North, the game that's you know for first place. You got to take care of business at home. Don't overlook this team. Green Bay Notre Dame, the team that only lost that Schwabenon by one point. They may be four and four in the league. Somehow they were right there in Schwabenon's gym. One. One thing that concerns me when I look at the roster for Notre Dame is they got a 6'6 guy, Max McHugh, and a 6'5 guy, Dave Miller. And then they got a guard that comes in at 6'2", uh, Pat Beeble. And uh, fairly good height, but the guards for South are somewhat short. How does that play into tonight's game? Well, Max McHugh, he's pretty special. Fourth in the league in scoring at 17 points a game. And as you mentioned, Beeble, too, he averaged eight points a game last year. So they do have two seniors uh, with that squad. But, again, you're talking about a team that's just 500, uh, you know, in conference play, this is a team that you should be able to beat. I think it does kind of stem down to our our guards here at South. There, they've been tough here, and it kind of looks that 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 you know that's where they're going to go all the time. Of course, you got Jake Schwartz in there as well, and uh, South depth as well. Now, Jake has something to play for tonight. He's being scouted. Yeah, St. Norbert's is here, Andy uh, Conard from uh, Green Bay Notre Dame baseball, and St. Norbert's is kind of here looking at him and kind of asked me about him and. Don't worry, Jay Guy, nothing but good things to say about you. Now, you mentioned before you alluded to the fact that Notre Dame is only 4-4 four and four in conference. They seem like a lot better team than 4-4. Four and four. Well, one of those factors, Case Zikowski, I mean, he just seems to always have their team play. You know, you're going to be a team that's going to pass. Don't expect a lot of mistakes out of uh, Green Bay Notre Dame. That's just how Coach Zikowski's been. And, and as we've said before, watch him through the years. Here's a guy that's probably not always had his talent, but always seems to be in every game. And when he's had a lot of talent, he's he's been very good. I mean, I remember years ago he beat Milwaukee Vincent, and you know had an outstanding year that year. So Case Sikowski is, uh, you know, really a great coach at Notre Dame. He's been in the conference for a long time. People might forget he coached uh, many years over at Green Bay Southwest. South, on the flip side, is deep in talent, and uh, Tim Schultz is not afraid to play his guys. No, they're a team that. You know, we've seen him over the last few years. He basically plays everybody on the team. Everybody gets a chance to contribute, which, you know, really helps, I think, through the year for a number of reasons. Number one, you got a lot of kids that are happy because they're playing. Number two, you don't get worn out or wear down or, you know, you don't get to, you know. Or if somebody gets hurt. And uh, we did find out that Tim Crowns was hurt the last game we were here, and he's been playing, so yeah. that's a good thing to have him back. Yeah, they were talking about that. TJ should be about uh, coming back. He's a Probably about 95% Coach Hines said, and by, you know, give him another week and it'll be 100% for North. But uh, you're right, with all that depth and things, that does help. Well, the JVs want a big one, and here come the JV coaching staff, and they got to be pretty happy. We're going to step out. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups and the tip-off for tonight's ballgame. The United Church of Christ, no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you're welcome here. Mommy, will there still be penguins around when I grow up? I sure hope so. Do more than hope. Since the 1970s, global warming has caused ice in the Antarctic to melt and populations of Adelie penguins have been rapidly declining ever since. There's still time to make a difference before the Adelie penguin vanishes along with its habitat. Go to defenders.org slash global warming to learn more. Why is it you two have so much trouble communicating? I don't like the way he talks to me. All I said was that you had a big osteo fight. Well, what about the secrets you kept from me? Oh, so I didn't tell you about my drug allergies. Big that deal. That could have been nasty. How's your shoulder coming, anyway? Fine. I worked up to three-pound dumbbells yesterday. Oh. Just three weeks after surgery. That's 
Pretty good. Communication is the best medicine. A message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Tonight's game. We remind you that inner sponsor events are extension of the classroom and that lessons are best learned with a proper respect. Back at South High School's Acuity Fieldhouse, where they're getting ready to uh, introduce the uh, starting lineups for tonight's game. Uh, we've uh, noticed that on Green Bay Notre Dame, they only have 11 of their 13 rostered players suited up, and we know that uh, David Miller is not suited up. Getting some help from a Notre Dame parent here, uh, Chet Zeise's dad. The other player that's not suited up is Steve Dennis. There you see the uh, Notre Dame players being introduced. They'll be starting Kevin McKenzie, number one, Pat Beeble, number three, number five, Mike Baloney, number 24, Harrison Barton, and number 44, we talked about him in the opening, their high scorer, Max McHugh. For uh, Sheboygan South, they'll be starting number 11, Jake Biederwolf. Biederwolf is a 5'10 junior guard. Chris Hemsing, number 15, is also a junior. He goes six feet. Also in the starting lineup is number 21, Grant Renzelman, is a 5'11 junior. Number 31, Derek Kiekafer, is a 6'3 junior. And rounding out the starting five is number 41, being scouted tonight by uh, St. Norbert's. 6'5", senior Jake Schwarz. South is coached by Tim Schultz. There you see him. Green Bay by Casey Zakowski. And there you see him in the crowd. Our officials tonight are uh, Larry Dietz and uh, former, there's uh, Coach Zakowski. And uh, actually South High graduate, uh, Doug Johnson. Doug uh, does a great job of officiating. His normal partner, I think, is um, Mark Wolfel. Mark not here tonight. Matter of fact, uh, Doug said, introduce Larry as Mark. <laughs> hey, uh, Larry Dietz will be tossing the ball at half court, by the way. Kevin McKenzie, number one, the 5'8 sophomore. He played last year and started, I believe, some of the games for Casey Zakowski. So he's a veteran uh, out there for uh, Coach for the Tritons. His dad is Pat McKenzie, team doctor for the Green Bay Packers. And uh, we did an interview with him a few years back. Wonder if he has to be at the pep rally, pep rally tonight. tonight. Yeah, I, I doubt it. McHugh lost the ball, but McKenzie right there to pick it up. South in the man-to-man -man defense. Something that's uh, Green Bay Notre Dame is, and Green Bay Southwest, they really like to take the air out of the ball and this is looks like what they're going to do right here and they're a little short on talent tonight without Mueller so they're going to uh, play this until they turn it over good steal by Renzelman he lays it up and in good quickness by Grant not only a little short on talent but uh, short on height also Miller is a 6'5 player won't be out there tonight he's got strep throat and we're not sure why uh, Steve Dennis is not in the lineup, or suited up, I should say. First team to 40 wins, Marty. Another steal. 
Jake Schwarz not able to uh, make the steal. And uh, Notre Dame makes some pay. McHugh, a first team all leaguer last year. As I said, fourth in the league this year in scoring. 18 footer is no good. Good inside position by Renzelman, but he can't uh, control the pass to uh, Kikafer. Notre Dame takes it away. Chris mentioned that uh, number one, Kevin McKenzie, is a sophomore. Pat Beeble is a 6'2 senior. Harrison Barton is a 6'2 junior. Max McHugh is a 6'6 senior. And uh, Mike Maloney is a six foot senior, so pretty much a senior laden lineup for uh, Notre Dame. On that game last year, Chris, if I remember correctly, they let McHugh open outside the line and he nailed a couple of threes that uh, cost South the win. Jake trying to take it to the hoop, had it tipped away by Pat Beeble. Jake Biederwolf has it. Going to set up. Notre Dame in a zone right now on the inbounds. Just need patience here, South. Just patience. What you like to see is the little penetration draw the defensive players together. Shot bounces off the rim, no good. By Hemsing. And uh, McKenzie going hard to the hoop has it tipped away. Three minutes. Bucket apiece. Yep. It's really slow. <laughs> Especially after last Friday night. <laughs> a little quicker than uh, Tuesday night, though. <laughs> One point in about 10 minutes for uh, Lakeland. That uh, tough loss. For the Lakeland ladies, yes. We'll be out at Lakeland this Tuesday. You see the men who are beat Marion the other night there on a streak themselves. The Q gets open inside again, lays up the easy uh, bunny shot. I, I don't know about you, Chris, but I was drained after that game. You know, it's... And, and you were right. You know, you said, you know, all they got to do is make one more basket. And uh, they could have won Renzelman with a three-pointer. I can say, honestly, I was almost as drained doing that game as I was the Ashwaubenon game. Almost. A well, good help defense underneath by Hemsing. Don't want to be lulled to sleep here. Beeble's shot is no good. McHugh with a rebound. Pump fake. Up and in. He's a load in there. And these are all off their whole offense so far. 6-5 Notre Dame on top. Or should I say 6-5 McHugh on top. Hempsing. Followed by Beeble. That'll be his first and the team's first. Get a good shot of Chris Hempsing. Kyle Rommel steps on the floor. And Bernabo, Brandon Bernabo in. Got to keep an eye on that boy. Three point specialist. Yeah. <laughs> McHugh grabbing him by the shirt. Schwartz from outside the line, no good. McKenzie from inside the line, a two-pointer. Cover that guy up. Eight to five. Don't be lulled to sleep, boys. Peter Wolf off a screen. I like that when he does that. I do too. Schwartz comes away with the loose change and puts it in. 
I just think that's their best stuff here at South is they're uh, coming off screens and those one, you know, one dribble uh, jump shots that they do so well. There's McHugh outside the line, off the backboard, around the rim and out. I'd like to see Jake get the ball inside a little more, Chris. I don't know about you, he seems to be pretty content to take the outside shot. I agree. Especially with some of the depth of Notre Dame gone. Q being their, basically their lone uh, post player, that's where you want to go. Beeble covering up Bernabel quite well. That's better. Rommel from inside the line. Rims off, Schwartz with the loose change again, but he can't get it in. And then he does and he gets fouled. Jake Schwartz. Foul goes on Mike Maloney. TJ Crown's coming in for uh, Grant Renzelman. Key Kafer gonna come in for uh, Jake if he hits his free throw. Fast moving quarter. 10 to 8 now, south on top, 203 remaining. Only two fouls so far in the quarter, both of them on Notre Dame. McHugh open for a second, had a second look, and then he put it up and he nailed a three. Well, I gotta be honest with you, I was happy when he shot it, but I wasn't happy when it went through the net. Not the results, yeah. Actually, One thing, I, I, li I like him shooting out there. Number two, he hesitated, so that's why I thought they'd throw off his shot, but uh, I was wrong. Hemsing's had a nice looking jump shot from about 16 feet out in front, but couldn't get it in. Notre Dame up 11 to 10, rolling down to 115. Actually, Chris, I think he's less effective if you go up and guard him and force him to put the ball on the floor. Coach Sikowski, I don't think, has substituted yet. He's got three at the uh, scorer's table now, but uh, that's a long time to be playing with no uh, subs. Hempson gets shoved, no call. Good movement to the ball. Rommel from outside the line nails a three. Kyle Rommel with a three. 13-11 south, 35 seconds and counting. You better hustle up, Chris. You're gonna get a 10 second call on him. Fifteen seconds. Kenzie way out at half court. Barton loads it up from outside the line, way short. Key Kafer with a rebound. He has a shot from half court. Hits the bracket, no good. At the end of one, South 13, Notre Dame 11. Global warming. Some say irreversible consequences are 30 years away. 30 years? That won't affect me. got five new players in there. Notre no. Dame comes out with uh, Alex Verbencore, number 25. Joe Ehrman, 22. Chet Zeise, 15. Mackenzie stays out there, number one. 
And also uh, Pat Beeble stays out there, number three. So three new players. Uh, Notre Dame went with their starting five the entire first quarter. Five of 12 shooting for South, five of 10 for Notre Dame. Just one turnover each. Hempsing shot, no good. Schwarz, oh, nice rebound by Jake, but he can't get the ball to go in. Kikafer on the save, couldn't hit it off of uh, McKenzie. Notre Dame has it, down two. That's Zizi with the ball, number 15. Zizi, a whale of a baseball player, conference player of the year last year. Yep, he's got a scholarship to the University of Iowa. And uh, I'll tell you, he can flat pick on that short, and he can hit. And uh, he pitches very, very well for a high school pitcher. I'm not saying he's... Uh, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> well, I'm not saying he's like 90 miles an hour, but, I mean, he dominates, I mean, high school pitching. But his best asset is the infield. He can just flat play. That foul, by the way, was on Jake Schwartz. His first first team foul on uh, South. And he's a very nice young man. Beeble shot uh, no good. Kiefer looked like he had the baseline, but didn't take it. Jake Biederwolf in the lane. A little short hook shot couldn't wasn't in either. Uh, they had a pretty nice attempt at the basket, but uh, couldn't get it in. That was a Carl Hendrick shot. It was kind of. Carl, a uh, teacher over at... Uh, Longfellow? Longfellow, yeah. Jump shot by Beeble is no good. But grabbing the rebound was Alex... Urban core. Kenzie to Beeble. Off the bracket again, no good. Strong rebound by Jake Schwarz. Oh, nice pass. And fouled on the way to the hoop was Grant Renzelman, but a great pass by Jake Peterwolf. Ehrman committing the foul. Joe Ehrman, his first, third team. Five rebounds already for. Uh, oh, here you see. Great pass by uh, Schwartz. Good replay, Scott. We were talking before the game out in the Commons, getting our game plan together. You know how we all like to hear positive things, and uh, you heard a lot of positive things about our broadcast of the uh, Ash Wabanon game. A very exciting game. One of the more exciting ones we've had in a, in a couple Ooh. of years. Number of years. Renzi puts in a couple, it's 15-11. Well, we had an exciting one here a year ago, north-south game, when Derek Deasy, who's here uh, yeah. watching south, he hit that three-pointer. and I think that interview after the game was the all-time best. <laughs> I mean, all the years I've been doing this, whether I did the interview or you or whatever, that was probably the best. Zizi fouled on the jump shot. He'll be shooting a pair. Well, I still remember him coming down over here to the right here and putting that in. And uh, again, I'm sure all our South fans like to hear that as we do. Well, this I was just saying about game. remembering exciting games. Oh and, yeah, for sure. But uh, which leads us, he said this is the first time he's been in the building. He's here tonight and uh, since that game, and uh, he's looking forward himself to coming back next week and watching the the big tilt. We'll be live next week. Always look forward. Uh, did you know the Saturday North South games because it'll be a full day again, not like we had that Tuesday. You right. Know, the yeah. freshmen will be playing in the morning and the JVs in the afternoon. So next Saturday, uh, if you have nothing to do, come out and watch the younger kids play too, but not just the varsity. So it's, it's a really neat community event. Zaizi knocks home a couple of free throws. It's 15 to 13 South on top. Oh, lazy pass. Stolen by Bergbert Coor, and he lays it no good over the back. Foul is going to go on number five, Mike Maloney. 
or no, no foul. They're saying the ball was tipped out of bounds by Notre Dame. South will just get it back. Very lazy pass. I thought they called a foul too. Browns. <laughs> Able to keep it. I'll tell you, South not looking real smooth right now on their no. offensive set. Good effort by the Tritons, that's for sure. Renzelman lost it on the way up, but gathered it back and put it up and in. Grant Renzelman has four points in the quarter, nine points in the game. They had that drive penetration you asked for before, Marty. Yeah. Oh boy, oh, nice back cut by McKenzie for an easy layup and a real nice pass by Geise. I don't know if there was a uh, screen up on top or something. but Yeah, I was trying to look for that too. Hemsing on a drive puts it up and in. His first hoop of the night. Yeah, I, I think there was a, an attempt at a screen. I don't think he rubbed off real well, but uh, he certainly got open enough. That foul goes on Mike Maloney, Chris, and that's his second. He'll be coming out of the ball game. Beeble at the table. He's going to check in. Uh, Max McHugh checks back in, number 44. Beaterwolf has not scored yet. A little surprised at that. McHugh has nine points in the first quarter. Yep. There's Coach Conrad of uh, Indy. Yep, he's... Uh, Coach at Green Bay Notre Dame and is for baseball, and he's a basketball coach at St. Norbert's. And he does some uh, Legion baseball coaching in the summertime. Notre Dame easily breaks the uh, pressure. Andy here for uh, St. Norbert's, scouting Jake. Outside shot by Geise is no good. You know what the number one thing I said about him is just that. He's got a knack for the ball told Andy that. I said he just has his knack to rebound. I said he's worked very hard on his shooting. Little right handed half hook by Jake is up and in. He has seven points in the ball game. It's 22 to 15 south on top. Rolling down to three and a half minutes remaining until halftime. Mike Martin along with Chris Wright bringing you the ball game. Another thing I like about Jake is you look at his build. He's just going to get bigger and stronger the more he hits those weights especially when he gets a little older. Beeble, no good. Well, of course, a rebound. Jake says, I'll take that, Derek Kiefer. That's number seven. Bernabo back in the ball game. He's open at the top. Don't let him open. Oh, McHugh right through the crowd, rather the rebound in. Probably the pace that uh, Notre Dame doesn't want. Geise from outside the line nails a three. He has five points. It's 22 to 18. Crowns couldn't get the rim, but Bernibo gathered it in. Jake to the hoop off the glass and down. Very active. They're picking up the pace now, Chris, both teams, it seems like. You got that right. I was just saying, I don't know if Notre Dame wants this pace. Oh, Kikafer with the good defense preventing the pass to... Uh, Verbin Coor. Beeble outside the line. Nice play run there by the Tritons. Well, first basket by Beeble, Chris. Well, he missed his first five. <laughs> so he's had chances. <laughs> Peter Wolf way outside the line. Couldn't get it to go. And nice attempt by Jake to uh, get the ball. Harrison Barton coming in and checking out is uh, Verbin Coor. In for South is Jake Reuter, 51. Rummel back in the ball game, 25. Well, this game kind of started late. The JV game ran late and they had introductions, but I'll tell you, this half is just cruised. One of my uh, notes on my pad was this was parents' night tonight. And so the game was delayed somewhat. McHugh's first shot, no good. His second shot is up and in. 
And in regard to that uh, JV game, South won it 59-52, but uh, Notre Dame made it very interesting uh, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, Peter Kautzer. Come on! Got the roll, and he's fouled. I was going to say, Peter Kautzer and Mike Vorpole. Uh, Peter Kautzer, they didn't like the end of that. That uh, got a little too close probably for those guys. Oh, yeah. They had a 10-2 run in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and he made, I think, a 14-point lead into a 4-point lead. Andy Kautzer's helping out his brothers there as well. Beeble picks up his second foul. All righty, shake them pom-poms. And another old-fashioned three-point play. That's three. Three-point plays the old-fashioned way in the half for South. And that equals, that's more than the three-point baskets they've had. They only had two three-point baskets. 27-23 South. Outside shooting just isn't working so far. Oh, Bernabel on a reach around gets called for the foul. But only the third foul on South. Notre Dame has five team fouls. I have South two for seven from the three-point line, Marty. What's unique about that three-point, the old-fashioned way, Notre Dame only has five total fouls, and three of them were on, on shooting. On baskets, yeah. yeah. Amazing. Reuter playing a good defense on McHugh. Geisy, kick out to McKenzie. He got the three. You know, they just hang around. Under a minute, 27-26 south. Bernabel taking it to the hole. Scoop shot, no good. Reuter, no good. Rebound. Barton. McKenzie pushing it. Oh, Notre Dame pulls it back out. Rolling down to 30 seconds left in the first half. South up by one, 27-26. Constantly moving, a lot of motion for Notre Dame. Well, they pull it back out, looked like they had a nice 12 footer but they passed that up to run more clock. Rolling down 10 seconds left. Ball tipped away by Rummel and then he has uh, has it tipped away, but fouled by Mike Maloney, and that'll be his third, Chris. That's a good foul, but a bad foul. <laughs> you don't want him to get his third foul, however. I think it was a bad pass. <laughs> right, but I created just, that situation. Right, but I was just saying, you don't want to give up an easy lap. You had fouls to give there, right. but, but you don't want to give up, get your third foul there. All right, in the ball game is uh, Joe Ehrman. 7.6 seconds, five seconds. Three, inside feed to Reuter, is lean in, off, no good at the buzzer. And we're at halftime here at South High's Acuity Fieldhouse where the Red Wings lead it, 27 to 26. Hey, how do I get in on a government auction? You know, like for a car? Well, what about renewing my driver's license? Don't bring your government questions to just anyone. Go to firstgov.gov, the official source of federal, state, and local government information. And don't everybody chime in at once. I joined the National Guard. I never thought I'd be saving lives. It's more than money for college. It's built my character and given me a sense of accomplishment. Now I'm on a career path and I'm the leader of my team. I put on the uniform and I have a whole new outlook on life. Country, community, family. That's what matters most to me. If that matters to you, go to 1-800-GO-GUARD.COM. How far would you go to protect the planet? I want you to build an ark. Here we go. Okay, that's good. Oh, okay. Ow. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe there's another way. People, the flood is imminent. Is it too much to ask for a little precipitation? 
Go to fightglobalwarming.com to find out what you and your community can do to reduce global warming pollution. Moving is so much of who we are. It's easy to take it for granted. Multiple sclerosis stops people from moving. We exist to make sure it doesn't. Join the movement, the National Multiple Sclerosis Society, at nationalmssociety.org. to any extreme to protect our children here. And here. And here. Well, there's a great way to protect our kids here against diseases like cancer, heart disease, and obesity. A diet rich in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, vegetarian foods. Now you can protect your kids from the inside out. To learn more, call 866-906-WELL. What makes something amazing? Is it doing what people once believed impossible? Or is amazing something you become? We believe in doing the amazing, in dominating air, space, and cyberspace, inventing technologies, in doing the unimaginable. But our most amazing accomplishment isn't what we've done, it's who we've become. Global warming is a problem. Problem. It's a problem.
Back at South High School's Acuity Fieldhouse where uh, South leads at halftime, but by the slimmest of margins, 27-26. Let's go through the scoring. Quite easy, Chris. Only eight people scored in the first half, four for each team. Max McHugh led all scorers with 11 points. Kevin McKenzie, the sophomore guard, had seven. Pat Beeble had three. And Chet Zaisi off the bench had a three-point basket and a couple of free throws for five. For South, Grant Renzelman and Jake Schwarz each had nine. Kyle Rummel had six. Chris Hempsing had three. Jake Biederwolf scoreless. And uh, as we look at uh, your shot chart over there, those two players, Hempsing and uh, Biederwolf, didn't get a lot of attempts tonight. Boy, they got to get involved. South High fan right there. They got to get involved. Uh, Biederwolf just three attempts. He's 0 for 3. And Hempsing's 1 for 4. Uh, good half, though, by Jake Schwartz. He really came to play. Four for eight from the floor. He does have 9.7 rebounds. Uh, but uh, Max McHugh, he came to play, too. That kid's, uh, he's, he's a nice player. He didn't play a whole lot in that uh, second quarter. He sat the bench the first part of the quarter. Uh, he had nine points in the first quarter and then only two in the second. Uh, that partly due to the fact he wasn't playing. Right. Exactly. Renzelman on a steal attempt, knocks it out of bounds. I think the quarter, the second quarter went so fast that uh, you, yeah, know, you Coach, couldn't get him in the game. Coach Zakowski kind of lost track. Right. Because there wasn't a lot of dead balls. And uh, like I said, that was an extremely fast half. Nice to see the dance team. They uh, took first place in their Freedom Invitational. And did a real nice job at halftime today. Very patient. McKenzie, drive to the hoop is no good, but tipped in by Mike Maloney. You're going to give it to him, huh? Two right. hands frailed. I didn't know who you're going to pick. I think uh, Sim Safford said that too. Okay. Jake's shot is no good. He's blocked, actually, but he got his rebound back and put it up and in. Jake Schwarz, south on top, 29-28. The biggest spread was uh, six points at uh, 22 to 16, I believe it was, in the second quarter. Motion offense by uh, Notre Dame. Oh, they go into more of a half court set. Good idea, just late there uh, on the pass by Barton. McHugh from 20. Bounces up, no good. Two Tritons on the board for the rebound. Beeble was the one that got the rebound. McHugh is now five of eight from the floor in the ball game. Well, McHugh off the glass and in. Jake Schwarz taking a chance on defense, took himself right out of the play when he didn't uh, knock the ball away. Inside to Renzelman, covered up nicely down deep by Maloney. Renzelman on the line, knocks home a two. He and Jake Schwarz have 11 now. It's 31 30 south. Barton gets away with a walk. McHugh from outside the line nails a three. Wow. Seven of ten from the floor. Two three-pointers. Almost at his conference average. Jake wants to counter with it. Nice pass to Kiefer. His layup is in. The pass. 33-33. Just under five minutes left in the third quarter. Brian Andrews on the floor camera. Eric Wiesman on the top camera. And Scott Miloff spinning the dials in the truck tonight. Rolling down to 4.30. Oh boy, they're 
Awfully content to make passes, huh, Chris? Yep. Wear you down. Lull you to sleep. Feeble. Foot was on the line, but he knocks home a two. Shooting has improved by both clubs so far. The second half. Biederwolf. Bango. That's what we're looking for. Boy, they left him wide open. Somebody fell asleep. 36-35. South on top. South continuing to play a man-to-man -man defense. Schwarz working real hard inside on McHugh. You can see it in your camera shot there. Two of the conference best. McHugh got inside position, but they didn't feed it down in. Beeble right down the middle. Kick out. McHugh for three. 30-second timeout by Notre Dame. By Notre Dame, eh? Well, that was a nice play because, you know, they dribbled in, drew the defense in, and then kicked it out. But I would say on the other two three-point baskets he's had, they just haven't stepped out on him. No, I don't they know what have. you think. McHugh's just been uh, lighting no, them up. And the whole team, they're six. I have them six for seven. From three-point line here, you're going to see a nice replay. Watch him take it down the middle, and then he kicks it out. Good replay, Scott. Excuse me, six. I said, I think I think six for seven, six for eight from three-point line for Notre Dame. Uh, South, on the other hand, uh, not doing as well out on the three-point line. I am just three, four, eight. Well, it was nice to see uh, Jake Biederwolf. Get in the scoring column. Notre Dame on top now, 38-36, and a little difference in uh, defense, a 1-3-1. One, one. And uh, I think South will see this uh, next week. Yep. Brown's in the ball game. His three-point attempt is no good. And McKenzie on a bust out, lays it up with the left hand and in. 40-36, Notre Dame. Something you don't see very often. Fast break opportunity for Notre Dame. And McHugh reaching in. Not a good foul by that young man, but only his first. And the first team foul of the second half. Neither team even approached getting to the bonus in the first half, Chris. And uh, we're less than three minutes left in the third quarter, and that's the first foul of the second half. Hempsing, shot no good. Jake Schwarz battling but couldn't get the rebound. Then they knock it out of bounds. It looked like it went off of Barton's foot. But uh, the officials say no. Kyle Rummel in giving uh, Chris Hempsing a blow. Well, McKenzie's really quick. It's all scrambling there for a minute to find uh, who they're picking up on defense. Rummel has Barton. Now this is what you don't want to do is fall behind because they are very good with the ball. They don't have too many turnovers. As a matter of fact, two all night. And now you have a four-point lead, and you know you work so hard on defense, so hard on defense. You know he makes a four-point game seem like a ten-point game. Good point, Chris. Ball goes on Jake Biederwolf, his second. Jake Schwarz taking a rest. Chet Zeise in for Mike Maloney. 40 to 36, Notre Dame on top. Playing excellent defense this quarter. And a rare breakaway basket for the Tritons. Plus their three-point shooting has been uh, very good. Wow. Barton missed a layup, layup, put back, and then he missed another one, and now he can't save the ball from going out of bounds. But boy, they had point-blank shots, and they couldn't get it in. South needs to take advantage. Good point, Marty. We got a score. There you see Jake's dad. Yep. Great goal. <laughs> hey, Chalks, how you doing? Oh, no. That's just a bad pass. Yeah, bad decision there. 
Bebo off the glass and in. For a minute, I thought that was Mike Hansen throwing that ball. Ooh. Rummel open for a second, lets her fly, no good. Uh-oh. Bad passes and missed shots, a bad combination for the Red Wings. And to pick it up on the defensive end, it's 42-36. Rolling down 115 remaining in the third quarter. Sizey has it on top, being guarded by Crowns. Renzelman. McHugh not bashful. Good block out by Rummel. Got to get the ball low. McHugh's shot was blocked, and then he's fouled. How did he get his own rebound? Oh, good point, Chris. He was at the three-point line, got the rebound. Well, he got, he got a, there's some a botched rebound there. Yeah. Watch him outside. Now he runs in, but there's no defender on him nope. to block his path. Ball went on Renzelman, his first. Cue at the line. Tell you what, South getting a couple breaks here. Missed free throw. Missed a layup. Got to take advantage of this, boys. You see Coach uh, Schultz. Not happy with the turn of events. And neither are we. That's uh, num point number 20 for McHugh. It's 43-36. Well, Beeble just waiting for that half co cross court pass again. Well, since the 1-3-1's one, one been inserted, they've been doing very well. Well, South has got nothing inside and they're not hitting their outside shots, so it's been a great tactical move by Casey Zakowski. Zizi down to 15 seconds down to 10 Notre Dame will get the last shot Beeble in the lane rises above the crowd shot is no good Rommel at the buzzer off the rim and no good take that back I thought Notre Dame would run her down a little further they didn't but anyway at the end of Three quarters of play, Notre Dame has captured the lead now. They have it 43-36. Global warming is a problem. Problem. It's a problem. I wanted to do something to become more energy efficient. To protect the environment. To protect the future. So I turned to Energy Star for help. Energy Star is helping me be part of the solution. Everyone can join the fight against global warming. Go to energystar.gov to learn what you can do. Together. Together. Together, we can all make a difference. Well? You work for the feds, right? Can I find a slightly used hatchback at one of those government auctions? Something roomy but practical. With a sunroof? With a sunroof. You know. USA.gov is your official source for government info. From student loans to government auctions, USA.gov. It's government made easy. There we see our Eric Wiesman. Give him a smile, Eric. Notre Dame, each quarter, Chris, has increased on their scoring. They went from 11 in the first to 15 in the second to 17 in the third. Uh, South really hit a road bump in the third quarter, only scoring nine points. And as we enter fourth quarter action, they're down seven points. No Notre Dame turnovers in that half. South, in one for five from three. You mean in that quarter, right? Quarter, I'm sorry. What do they have for the game? Only two. One or two? Jeez. Peterwolf covered up nicely by Maloney. Hemsing down the lane. Got it up and in. Let me tell you, if there's not a sense of urgency by South... Uh, you better have it now. You better be all over on the defensive end. I mean, you got to be up there on these guys. Notre Dame has really done a great job on uh, Jake Biederwolf and Chris Hemsing. Between the two of them, they only have eight points. You better step it up because uh, Notre Dame is in a good position. I'll tell you, Zizi showing good hands. Couldn't get the shot to go. 
And Jake Schwarz with the strong rebound. Here it Peter comes. Wolf. Pull up jumper, no good. Notre Dame all over the glass for that missed shot. Three of 13 from out there. Oh, I think uh, Doug Johnson was gonna call the charge, but Larry Dietz got his call first, and they went with that. And what it is, watch it right here. Oh, that looked call. like a charge to me. Good replay. Man, you could really see what was going on there. But anyway, Beeble with a basket and a chance at a three-point play. The foul went on Hemsing his first. Oh, missed free throw. Notre Dame gets it right back. McHugh with three seconds in the lane. First time we've seen that call all year. But we like it. First time we've seen the turnover mark here in the uh, second half. 1-3-1's so one, just uh, not helped south. And like you said, Marty, this is what North may show next week. You gotta attack. They're just too slow. Good. Well, that's not a good shot. And another bust out. Maloney all alone lays it up and in. Time out by South. You know what I don't like, Chris, is that South seems very content to just move it around the perimeter. They're never getting any penetration, either with a pass or the dribble. And uh, they're not forcing the zone, you know, to, to deconform. Yeah, it's just no sense of uh, urgency. You're right. No dry penetration and then kick. Uh, I'll tell you, Jake Schwartz is playing real hard tonight, but uh, the other boys have got to get stepped up and a little more... Uh, Sense of urgency, that's uh, the best way I can put it. They just, I mean, you got to go hard all night, and uh, I don't know if that's just been the case. I think their plan of attack would be okay if you're hitting those outside shots, but it seems like they can't hardly buy a basket in the second half. They did have four baskets in the uh, third quarter, but, uh, you know, that wasn't nearly enough, and uh, Biederwolf finally cracked the ice with his three-pointer, but... You know, that was almost on a defensive mix-up, and that was before they went to the 1-3-1. It's 47-38, Notre Dame now up nine, and uh, South fans are definitely concerned with these turn of events. It's the last time I listened to Terry Scherschel, too. <laughs> he said South by 20 before the game. Move it. There's a little penetration and a pitch out. And we get a travel call. Oh, man. Think Casey know that Doug, Doug graduated South High School? Didn't matter on that call. Beeble. South attempting to do the double team, trying to turn up the defensive pressure. But uh, like you said, <laughs> that kid, McKenzie went to the table to check in. He almost received the pass from Zeise. Wow. McHugh with a three-pointer. Oh, man. 23 points for that, for that player. Don't pull it back out. Penetrate in. Peter Wolf. Hits another three. This is the end, boys. You got to create turnovers. You forced three all night. You got to oh. work on this end. Hempsink tips it away from uh, Zaisi. It's 50 to 41, Notre Dame. And uh, they've played an excellent second half. You know who I think would be a good Five. guy to throw it in? Zaisi. Go deep. Oh. 
Well, good defensive pressure that time by the Red Wings to force the turnover. I'll tell you who looked open was Barton. He made a move to go deep and then pulled up. Now a 2-3. Biederwolf covered up by Barton. Inside pass to Biederwolf, uh, to Schwarz. His pass, shot is off from about 12 feet. Crowns, good hustle on the D. And Jake almost did tip it away, but now South comes away with it. Hempsing over to Biederwolf. Nice fake. Gets the feet underneath him and nails a three. There you go, 50-44 and a 30 second timeout called by South. By South. I like the effort now, Marty. See how they're scrambling on the floor, they're up in the passing lanes. Fake, get your feet underneath you and then put it in. Good job on the pump fake. And an even better job on the replay. I just like the effort now. They're scrambling on the floor, you knocking know, around. Even though they're down six, you know, South has got a lot of players they can go to for this scrambling business. Notre Dame doesn't seem quite as deep. You know, maybe they can wear them out in the last uh, 429 of the fourth quarter. They're going to have to make some shots too, Chris. Uh, Notre Dame only has one team foul, South has three, so that uh, bonus doesn't seem to be much of an issue at this point. Beeble breaks pressure. Barton wide open. Shot over Jake Schwarz is no good. Make them play fast. Good, I good idea there by South, I like the trap attempt. I'd like to see Jake underneath. Wolf. Had a look, couldn't get it to go. Had a boy. Renzelman oh. lost it. Zaisi with the takeaway. Under four minutes now remaining in the ball game. Notre Dame up by six. McKenzie, they're playing fast, Chris. You hit it on a good point there. The, this press is forcing them to play up tempo, and now they're starting to turn it over. They've had more turnovers, I think, in the last three minutes than they had the whole rest of the game. Yeah, they had four, they had two in the first three quarters. Keep moving it, keep moving it. Nail one, Jake, nail one, Jake. Good try by Hemsing, but uh, McHugh is a man inside. Hard to get the ball away from him. Timeout by Notre Dame, a 30-second timeout. You know, once they get the ball across half court like they did that last possession, Chris, they're in their comfort zone because now they can start running the ball, you know, and you got them on the full court trying to bring it up under pressure. It's a whole different ball game. Well, they do a very nice job of just basically down screening and popping out low. Number 44 on the bottom of that right-hand side of the scoreboard had a 23 by it. That's the number of points for Max McHugh. I, I mean, they just, you know, down screen, and they pop out high. They're really high, and they really do a nice job of spreading it out, which also makes sure that there's no double teams or anything. There's Jeff Bristol and uh, other situations. That Steve Rotman was on the side there. He's the uh, maintenance guy over at Pigeon River. Does a great job over there. Rotate up a little quicker, TJ, a little quicker. There's nothing wrong with fouls. Go for the ball, you got three minutes left, you gotta get closer to that bonus situation. We need some steals. Notre Dame doesn't necessarily wanna shoot. Barton is going fast again. Make them shoot, that oh. away. Get the ball tipped three, away from McHugh. Three, 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 well, McHugh comes three. away with it. And no three second call, rightfully so, since there was no possession. McHugh from way outside the line. He must have thought there was a shot clock. I just thought he had the ball underneath One, there two, for all three, that four, time. Five three pointers for that young man. He get a great shot of Pat Beeble. 
for a foul on Beeble, that's his third. But now it's 53-44, South down nine in under three minutes, 2.58 left in the ball game. Peterwolf grabbed by Barton as he dribbled by him, but only the third team foul. Tell you what, Max McCune, 10 of 15. Just been a force. Peter Wolf with a quick release, a catch and shoot, couldn't get it. And McHugh with another strong rebound underneath and a bust out by Notre Dame. Diva lays it up and in, an easy one. Gotta How get many there. times haven't they had bust out layups, Chris? Oh, South looked like they had a breakaway, not a breakaway basket, but a fast break opportunity. But a timeout called by Coach Tim Schultz. It's a full timeout, Scott, so let's take a 30 second break. We'll be back, south, south trailing 55 44. Back at uh, South High School's Acuity Fieldhouse, where uh, South trails by 11. Notre Dame has just played an outstanding basketball game. Chris, really the whole game. Uh, they didn't score much in the first half, but uh, they certainly made up for it here in the second half. Two thirty-three remaining in the ball game. South is really going to have to go some to uh, win this ball game. Not out of the question, however. And a steal by Beeble on a lazy pass to uh, Jake Schwarz, and now watch him pull it out. Renzelman comes up hard to try and steal it away from Barton and commits the foul. That's the uh, fifth team foul. On south, still two more away from the bonus. 2-10, McKenzie dribbling through the crowd. 17 points in the whole second half for south. Jake. Jake committing his, uh, sec pardon me, his second foul, that's right. Just two points here in the second half. Barton doubled, gets it out of there. Tick, 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 tick. Two minutes. And counting. McKenzie gets it to McHugh. Lays it off to uh, Barton for an easy basket. His first points of the night. And if you're a Notre Dame fan, you couldn't have picked a much better time. 57 to 44. 136 and counting. And South still doesn't look good on offense. Too slow. You got to move the ball, boys. Hempsing on a three pointer. Got it, and he was fouled by number 24, Harrison Barton. Our next broadcast will be next Tuesday when uh, Concordia invades Lakeland on the men's side. And then uh, next Saturday, a week from tomorrow, on January 19th, we'll be right back here for the North-South game. The girls will start about 6 and the boys after that. Both South boys and girls won that game last time. Did Hemsing make that free throw? He did. Good. I was looking at the schedule. Quick foul by South. That one going on Bernabel. Getting some uh, three point. Well, now they take him out. Thought they brought him in for some three point power shooting. 
Bring Crowns back in. I'd have left Bernabo in there. I would have too. TJ still trying to get his uh, sea legs worthy. Ebel makes the front end of the one and one. Puts the lead back to 10 for uh, Notre Dame. Boy, in that third quarter, Chris, you know, it came out 27-26, and all of a sudden it's 28-27, then it's 29-28. You know, just bounced back and forth for the longest time. And Barton over the back commits a foul. His third. But uh, then all of a sudden, Notre Dame just took off. Well, I think uh, McHugh hit a couple of those three, and instead of being one-point leads, and it was two-point leads, and it was three-point leads, and it was six-point leads, and they, you know, as you said, they can, once they got that lead, they can control, and South couldn't buy a basket. Hemsing's shot is no good. McHugh with another rebound, getting it over to Beeble, and then we got a whistle. Jake Schwartz laying in pain on the floor. Boy, Scott, if you can get a reap, he turned an ankle. If we can get a replay of that in slow motion, maybe we can catch uh, Jake, see what happened. Oh boy, you don't like to see that at all. Well, we're gonna pull, don't, don't step away just yet, Scott. See if you can rewind that replay, or maybe take a, take a break and get it queued up so when we come back we can take a look. Looks like he's gonna be down for a little bit. 109 remaining in the ball game. Notre Dame up 10, 58, 48. Called a foul on Barton. Jake being helped off the floor over to the trainer's table. Here we're gonna see it. Jake is uh, behind 24 and I think he stepped on his, on his foot possibly and turned it over. I don't think it was anything intentional. It's hard to tell. Just turned on it sideways like that. Good shot there, good replay. In slow-mo. TJ Crowns pounding home a three. His first points of the night. And it's 58-51. Quick 30-second timeout by South. I think they just mixed up feet there. Yeah, I do too. You know, he got called for the foul though. Yeah. I didn't notice him do anything. Well, he kind of turned his ankles about. I thought maybe what he did was step on uh, Barton's foot, possibly. Well, certainly hope replay. it's nothing senior, yeah. Serious. Yeah, that was a great replay. In slow-mo. <laughs> Scott's in there spinning the dials. How's the slow-mo work? <laughs> we'll get it yet. I knew I should have directed tonight. I knew it. <laughs> you had a big opportunity. And reaching in. And we'll see if we can get Renzelman or uh, Beaterwolf. McHugh will go to the line. Either way, they're both going to have their third foul. Yep, it's Renzi. They got to hope Notre Dame misses some here. A foul number eight, so McHugh has to make the first to get the second. Puts a little pressure on him. So far in the ball game, he's oh, one for two only. He does have 26 points. He's been a man among boys tonight. Makes the lead eight with exactly one minute remaining. Little short, Barton, good job of laying off. Didn't want to pick up his fifth fall, Hemsing. Kick out to Rommel, who kicks it out to Crowns. Oh, had a good look, but couldn't get it in. And Zeise with a nice rebound. And then we get a foul from behind on McKenzie. You know, I would have taken the easy two there, Marty. With a minute left. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's in the paint right. right there. 
point, 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 and uh, draw this out. 10 feet's a lot different than uh, 20. McKenzie looking for his 10th point of the ball game. The old left-hander puts it in. Guy's awfully quick. Eleven points for uh, Kevin McKenzie, the sophomore starter. Renzelman to the to the basket and up and in. A quick timeout by South. That's why I thought they should have done before. Well, he certainly had a good look. Right, let's take a look at it. Puts his foot down and turns it. Yep. I don't even think he hit his. Uh, he may have touched his foot, but and Barton's just looking back to see what happened. Just an unfortunate set of circumstances. Man, he's limping over. Jake is to the, uh, there you see him. Got his ice on his foot. Cold pack. And I got a feeling he'll be here tomorrow morning getting some uh, treatment on that. Hopefully it's very minor. Yeah, really. I'd love, to, the truth. I'd love to see him play next Saturday night. Well, the one thing about being a young guy is uh, your recuperation time generally is quite a bit shorter. And I can remember when I was a kid turning my ankle, and it, you know, depending on the severity, of course, but uh, hopefully you're able to come back a little quicker than maybe an old guy like you and me. Yeah, he ended up with 10 rebounds tonight. 38.1 seconds remaining. A deep one, McKenzie showing off his arm, and that ball, okay, it's going to be a foul on Crowns. Otherwise, the ball goes off of Beeble, but that uh, is not going to be the case. Why didn't they have Zizi, like you said? That would have gotten there in about... <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't have had enough arch. <laughs> it would have been a straight, a flat liner. Double bonus in effect now. They've been pretty good there, Marty. Yeah, Efficient. They kept, yeah. They were two for two in the first half. Yeah, you actually they haven't been that great at the free throw line, Chris. Beaterwolf from outside the line, no good. Barton with a rebound, good, quick. There's that pass we were looking for from Zizi. Throws a nice one to uh, Beeble who lays it up and in. 64-53, under 20 seconds. Uh, they let uh, Beaterwolf go for an easy two. He has uh, 11 points in the ball game. And Zizi is just gonna pull it back out. Smart move by Chet. Oop, and Zizi on the reverse dribble. <laughs> Throws it away. Actually lost it on the spin dribble. 4.4 seconds. Notre Dame is going to come away with a real nice win, Chris. It's 64-55 right now. his last air of the year. <laughs> Hemsing, no good at the buzzer, and that's the ball game. Sheboygan South drops a home game that they needed to have. 64-55 to Green Bay Notre Dame. We're going to step out. When we come back, we'll uh, wrap the ball game up. Today, people seem to care a lot more about how good they look than how well they see. And that's a big mistake, because an eye doctor can see things you can't, like the first signs of glaucoma, diabetes, and high blood pressure. For men and women over 40, it might be wise to look into your eyes. Visit CheckYearly.com, a message from the Vision Council of America and AARP.
The dream of education beyond high school, the cost can put it out of reach. There is help. We are federal student aid, part of the U.S. Department of Education. Each year, we award $80 billion to all eligible students and families. Learn more at federalstudentaid.ed.gov. Don't get left behind. The most costly education is the one not begun. Federal Student Aid. Start here. Go further. Back at South High School's Acuity Fieldhouse where uh, Green Bay Notre Dame played an excellent second half and wound up winning the ball game 64-55. to uh, Chris, you know, just one of those things, you know, once you, and you mentioned it earlier, once Notre Dame gets the lead, they're very tough to play against. Yeah, they're very well coached, and uh, they really spread it out. And once you got the lead, they got good ball handers. We saw in the first, you know, three quarters, just two turnovers on the whole, uh, you know, game now. That's unofficial, but that's what I have. But they don't take turn over the ball. They hit, you know, some bonus free throws. They weren't like 100%, but they always seem to get the free throws when they had to. Uh, they are very efficient on the floor. They are 7 of 9 of shooting in the fourth quarter. You know, 8 of 12 in the game from three-point line. I mean, they almost played what they needed to do, a perfect game to beat South, and uh, they got the victory. Max McHugh is really a man out there. He led all scorers with 27 points. Uh, chipping in with 15 was Pat Beeble. And uh, Kevin McKenzie you know, had 11 points, a very quiet 11. But, boy, I'll tell you, he really runs the show out there being only a sophomore. Yeah, he took care of the ball. Good quickness, as you mentioned in the game. He has pretty good speed. Uh, by the way, uh, McHugh, he had uh, 10 rebounds, so uh, oh, big-time double-double. Double. Yeah. For uh, Sheboygan South, they had... Good contributions. He had four different players in double figures with uh, Renzelman at 13, Schwarz and uh, Biederwolf with 11 each, and then, uh, uh, pardon me, Hemsing had 11, and Biederwolf had uh, 10. But uh, it seemed like Biederwolf and Hemsing just didn't get into the flow of the game. No, and a lot of that was late. A lot of it was real late when, you know, they're trying to scramble. They hit a couple threes, and, you know, they got some bonus baskets at the end. Most of the damage was already done, and by the time they started you know, coming back, they were already down by over double figures, and it was just a little bit too late. You know, it's tough enough when you lose a game, but then when you lose your best player late in the game, uh, Jake going down with an injured ankle, boy, that really hurts, and uh, we don't know any more than he injured his ankle, so, you know, we don't know what's going to be happening with them uh, for the North-South game and, you know, so on. Yeah, they have Manitowoc come Tuesday, and next Saturday they have North, so they got a lot to uh, clean up before then, and hopefully Jake, like I said, is 100% because... He's a heck of a ball player, and their team is completely different without him. Uh, nothing against the rest of their team, but he's just a force inside in rebounding and uh, offensive rebounds and, you know, made baskets and things, and uh, he's tough to replace. Our next ball game is going to be on Tuesday when uh, Concordia invades Lakeland College. That's for the men's side. And then uh, we mentioned it earlier, but next Saturday on January 19th, we'll be right back here at South High School for the North-South game. Uh, for the crew, Eric Wiesman, Brian Andrews on the camera, Scott Miloff, excellent replays tonight, Scott. Great job there. For my partner, Chris Wright, I'm Mike Martin saying thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you down the road.